I won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a boat and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal parts about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret code, 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 Science can be tricky, it can overheat your brain. Science can be hard to chew, each bite can be a pain. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal parts about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret code. Pocket off the bumper. Corner pocket off the bumper. Hmm. That's game. Bravo! Bravo, Carlin! Bravo! Congratulations. You win. Ah, oh, Doko. Join me for one game. There's no fun playing all by myself. Hmm. Well, at least you always win that way. That way, I may develop a split personality. I'm sorry, my friend, but I still can't. I have a lot of work. Oh, come on, you. How can a few space rocks be more interesting than pool? It's readily apparent that you know nothing about asteroid belts. You are probably aware already that our solar system is comprised of the Sun and eight planets. And of course, Pluto, a dwarf planet. But there are other dwarf planets in addition to Pluto, such as Eris, Haumea, and Makemake. And there are also over 3,000 comets hurtling through our solar system's vast space. Yes, yes, very interesting. So how about we play a game of pool now? Hold on, I didn't get to tell you about the asteroid belts yet. Oh yeah. The space rocks. It's a ring of asteroids spread out between Mars and Jupiter. Oh, I see there really are quite a number of them. More than 300,000. And they're all very different. From 30 meters in diameter, which is about the size of our sphere jet, up to several hundred kilometers. The largest object in the belt is Ceres. Its diameter is 950 kilometers. This asteroid is so large that it's been classified as a dwarf planet. And we're not even including objects with diameters under 30 meters. There's over a million of them in the belt. Okay, since we've started, I'll ask, where did they come from? Earlier scientists hypothesized they might be fragments of a ninth planet in our solar system, Phaeton. In this theory, several million years ago, Phaeton collided with a particularly large object and was destroyed. Poor oh, people of Phaeton. Don't worry, this theory is outdated. Today, scientists believe that the asteroid belt is just fragments of an unborn planet. When stars form in space, a lot of dust and gas is emitted. Thanks to gravity, they turn into rocks. The rocks gravitate to each other, and over billions of years until a planet is formed, like our Earth, for example. But if there's a massive object like a giant planet near the forming planet, then its gravity won't let the rocks merge. In our case, that giant object was the massive Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system. So the asteroid belt is comprised of planet-forming material. At least, that's what a majority of scientists believe today. That's fascinating, don't you think? Definitely more interesting than playing pool by myself. <laughs> well, play with Wally then. You're joking. Teach him. You're a great teacher. Oh. Teach me. Yes, yes, Carlin. I think I may have a hidden talent. Yes. 
Ah, ooh. Obvious potential. You just need to focus his potential in the right direction. He'll outplay all of us before you know it. When do we start playing, Carlin? You still have strength left to talk? More training then. Can we play today? I think I'm ready now. Uh, yeah, later. For now, why don't you go and practice a little bit, something like shots off the bumper. <laughs> huh. And what if we correct our flight path by 38 degrees and approach the object on a low thrust from our impulse engines? Negative. The risk of collision with the asteroid is too great. Hmm, how can we get to it then? What are we getting to? Oh, don't scare me like that anymore, my furtive friend. You see, there's this asteroid that has a phenomenal amount of iridium metal, and it'd be great to get much closer to it. On Earth, there aren't enough metals for you? Alas, my friend, the resources of our home planet are not unlimited. Mankind on Earth constantly consumes resources. Some of them are renewable, for example, like forests, if, of course, you plant new ones. But others are not. First and foremost are extractable resources. In search of extractable resources, people dig deeper and deeper into the Earth's core. Each year, the population of the Earth grows and resources are required in greater quantities. But non-renewable resources only diminish. It's a sad prospect of the future, but here we have an asteroid that can help. Scientists believe that some, and maybe even many, space objects are rich in resources. The easiest means of extracting the resources would be on-site automatic mining that would not require human assistance. Mined resources would be collected and delivered to Earth using special vehicles, also automatically. What's the problem? Extract your iridium. Alas, this equipment has yet to be invented. <laughs> That's a problem. Another means would be manual extraction. That's a good alternative. Absolutely correct. In the very near future, we may mine asteroids that way. First, we tow the asteroid into Earth's orbit and then extract its resources there will be brand new companies designed to mine asteroids. If it's a good alternative, then why are you so unhappy? Our asteroid is surrounded by dozens of others. You can't get there. At least I, as a scientist, see no viable means. I see one! A carom shot! A what shot? A carom shot! It's a pool shot. A few rebounds, and the ball, or in this case, the asteroid, will come directly to us like on a silver platter. Ah. Attention, Sphere Jet is damaged. What the heck happened? I just, I just wanted to practice a little bit. My friend, have you gone utterly crazy? Indeed, it appears someone didn't understand your pool instructions very well. Who shoots like that? My friend, what are you thinking about? That was, hmm, training. Now again. We need a stop shot! My friend, what are you doing? We don't need a stop shot. It's a bank shot! <laughs> top spin! We need to put on top spin! 
Three shot. Ah, uh, kiss shot. Watch and learn. How about an Australian screw shot? Spearjet has incurred extensive damage. Extensive damage. I think it was a really good shot. directly towards Earth. This is a catastrophe. What are you so upset about? You said yourself that asteroids should be delivered to Earth. First, that's not an asteroid, but second, it's too big. After it crashes into Earth, we won't need any more resources whatsoever. Don't freak out. Doko will put on some topspin and alter this rocket trajectory. Maybe... Uh, maybe we should make a safety shot. No, a couple of shots and the asteroid will get smaller and we'll block its path. What's there to block here? We don't need topspin, but backspin. Wally, Wally. And I say a safety. What kind of safety shot? Let the professionals work here. I'm already a professional. Uh. Hmm. Attention, energy supply at zero. Uh, unsportsmanlike, Daco. Unsportsmanlike. Look over there. That's game. 